those filters? Yeah, I think so. Let me check here and see. Well, hi, Lloyd. How are well, you? Right. And Mary. Hello. Hello. How are you? Yeah. How are you doing? Long time no see. Yeah. Too long. Is Don in? Well, it's New He's usually here by lunchtime anyway. <laughs> so right. let me go check and see if he's in. Yeah, okay. I'd like to see him if he is. Okay. I haven't seen him for a while. We haven't been over this neck of the woods for a while. Don, Lloyd, Mary are here to see you. Oh, are they really? Great. Okay. Please. Okay. Come on in now. Okay. Come on in. Hey, Lloyd. <laughs> Good to see you. Good to see you. Hi, Mary. How are you? Good to see you. Well, come on in and sit down. Yeah. Visit for a little bit. We were in this neck of the woods and just wondered how you guys are doing. Oh, okay. See you what's going on. Okay. 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 I've sold all my heavy equipment now and uh, all my big tools and uh, right now I spend a lot of time down in the basement cracking walnuts <laughs> and working out the shop where it's not so cold. Um, Are you still doing your music? Yep, yeah, yeah, I'm still doing it. I got uh, three, three regular gigs a month and uh, then Four times a year I play at, I'm doing mostly retirement homes, mm -hmm. and uh, four times a year I play at the Forum on a Sunday night. So how long have you been retired now, Lloyd? I retired in 01. Okay. So, uh, yeah, when, uh, when Mary Ellen turned uh, 62 and started growing Social Security, well, that's, we figured we could live on that. But, uh, and that, that was for actually the second time that you yeah. were with Louisville switching. Tell yes. us about the, the first time. The first time, uh, well, Gerald Eckert got me into it. Uh, when International Harvester shut down, we were, we were starting to car auto garage in, in my shop there at home. And uh, so I, uh, it was getting pretty cold in the wintertime, and I don't remember whether the first winter or the second winter after International shut down, Gerald said that they could use another mechanic over on Ulrich Avenue in the wintertime to keep where to work in where it's warm. So I went over there and worked on the old uh, switchers from the old gas engine switchers. Yeah. Out of LAP mostly there. We drove them back and forth from the shop to the LAP and, and uh, it was quite an experience. It, it was uh, it was good, a lot better than being outside my cold shop at home. <laughs> you did that for several years, didn't you? In the witch town, uh, at the first time. Yeah, it was more than yeah, right. It was more than uh, more than that one winter. Uh, I wound up on the second shift as a mechanic there. Uh, I remember your dad would call at uh, five minutes before quitting time to make sure that somebody was still there. You know, and I used to look forward about setting a watch for that phone call. He was still up in Michigan. So uh, it was, uh, yeah, it was good. I liked working over there. Uh, some of the things I didn't like, like the day I built, filled your office full of smoke. <laughs> we had, remember that? I had the old Mac Wrecker, uh, the, something to quit, it was the uh, char turbo charger, turbo charger had quit working on the thing. I didn't know it and started up. And the exhaust pipe was pointed right straight up at your office door, and your door was open. And I read that thing up, and you, I heard that door slam up there. And I thought, oh my gosh! <laughs> it killed every bug in the office. So. <laughs> yeah, you said you had sun in your desk drawer. <laughs> oh boy! That, and then uh, another time, uh, you got a pressure washer, new pressure washer, and uh, so I was going to pressure wash. The trucks, I think I had been pressure washing some of the trucks, cleaning them, and it had two nozzles. One was a low pressure nozzle to put the soap on with, the other was a high pressure nozzle to wash it off with. And I put the low pressure nozzle on there, I think, the way it happened, but I still had the pressure washer set on high pressure. And I turned the thing on, and that nozzle went airborne, out of sight, <laughs> probably went downtown somewhere, in case we somebody's with it. Never did see that novel again. Launched it into outer space. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, there was uh, things happen like that, and I guess they do everywhere. But but uh, I really enjoyed working there. Well, we enjoyed working with you, boy. We had a really good time. 
in addition to get a lot of work done, we, we enjoyed each other. Yeah, we, we put some new motors in trucks and we did quite a bit of work in there. I know it was a, uh, a good, ex interesting experience. One of my favorite memories, Lloyd, was when we built the new building here in 94 and finished it in 95. And the, the old building had two bays in there and then we came to this building and there were five bays in the original part of this building and they were, uh, each bay was long enough to hold three Ottawa's and I can remember you and Dwight and I eating our lunch on five gallon buckets back in the back corner and we, yeah. we talked about, boy, we'll never fill this garage <laughs> up. Yeah, yeah, I remember that. Now look at it, it wasn't any time at all until it was overloaded, wasn't it? No, and then we had to put an addition on yeah. it. So, uh, yeah, that's, I remember that, sitting back there, looking over the great big building, and wondering if we were going to fill it up. And, and when we came out here then, too, we got to grow some, and you actually ended up doing some other other jobs with Louisville Switching, too, did you? Yeah, for several years, I don't remember how many years, but... Uh, I had to pick up a truck with some parts and my tools in it, and uh, I was dispatched by speakerphone, mostly. I was here sometimes, but most of the time I was out going from LAP to KTP to UPS, all good foods, and uh, I don't know if there's any others or not. There were several places where I'd run from one to the other to start a truck or put brake chambers on or fix headlights or all kinds of things that... Uh, were going wrong with the trucks and it wasn't worth bringing the trucks into the shop. And I remember one day I was uh, in the wrecker bringing a truck in from KTP and I turned off a Snyder, I guess it was, on the 64 and a tire blew out on the on the truck I was towing. And uh, it swung over and hit the guardrail. Good thing that it didn't blow the other tire out and swung over to the other traffic lane. But anyhow, uh, I called uh, called here. You guys called the uh, tire company. I sent a guy out there, a little young guy from uh, New Jersey, I think he was from, a little kid. Seemed like a kid to me. And he uh, jacked the truck up, got out there and changed the tire. And I had stopped over a nest of fire ants on the berm there beside the road. And he laid down there when neither one of us noticed it. You know, he laid down there and was working on jacking that thing up, and all once he jumped up, boy, he was fresh, he said, something's eating me up. I said, oh my gosh, I parked over a nest of fire, and I'm move up. He said, no, it's okay. And <laughs> he laid back down there, and he'd work a little bit, and then he'd <laughs> jump up and brush all the heads off. And, uh, but that was one thing I remember about bringing that truck in. He changed the tire, and I got on in here with it. <laughs> well, several years, <clears throat> That, that you were here at, at the uh, at the end of your career here, Lloyd, you did some other things in here too. Yeah, you uh, you uh, brought me in the, into the office, Dwight showed me how to run a computer, and then you were starting Robinson Carters, I guess, about that time, and, and we had drivers, and so uh, I did some dispatching of the truck drivers, and then you and I went to, to uh, Tennessee one day, and uh, so we got a parts department going, and I remember uh, we, they kept giving us parts quotas, and we kept tripling our parts quota. Mm -hmm. And uh, so we got uh, jackets one time, they gave us a bunch of, about five jackets or something like that, got wristwatches, and uh, I think we got t-shirts, or got something else, about three times I think we tripled our parts quota. And, yeah. And got, got extra prizes from Ottawa. And then I got to tour the Ottawa plant too, got to go tour that. And that was very interesting. You had uh, and, uh, one customer that you had uh, developed that was actually over in the Azor Islands off the coast of Portugal. Right, yeah. Uh, uh, Fatima, the lady was named Fatima. Okay, and, uh, yeah, yeah, that's right. They had an older model Ottawa and they would call and you'd look the parts up for them. And I think they really enjoyed the fact that you would spend a lot of time with them to help make sure that they knew exactly what it was they needed. Yeah, yeah, they, uh, she was, she became very friendly over the phone. I finally asked them where the Azores was because I didn't know where it was. Mm -hmm. She said we're Portuguese down here. So, yeah, we, uh, uh, a lot of the stuff that they needed, we had. 
and a lot of it they didn't we didn't have and we'd ship it. I remember you bought a, a digital scale so we could uh, uh, accurately weigh our stuff to send them so we could build them the right amount for it. Yeah, it, it was it was enjoyable. It was interesting, you know, very interesting. Uh, it, was, it was a lot of fun too. And yeah. I, I remember you had something to do with the uh, the way we ended up with with Chuck here label switching, yeah. too, didn't you? Yeah, there was a, a warehouse over on on uh, Great Lane that uh, we picked up uh, paper products, and I was over there one day picking up paper products, and and Chuck was in there uh, as a warehouse. Uh, I guess the only one in the warehouse, maybe, I don't know. But anyhow, uh, we got to talking, and he had worked for uh, Oklahoma Welding, had welding experience, and we needed somebody that had welding experience here. And uh, so I I said we were looking for somebody that had welding experience, and, and he came over and interviewed for the job, and uh, he's still here, and, and he, I think it was a very good uh, choice we ran into him, very good uh, stroke of luck that we, we had there. I think so too. He's been a great addition to the company. Yeah. We, we've loved working with him and it was good that you were able to find somebody like that. Yeah, I was really lucky to, to get on the check because he was, was and is a good good man. He, he was really good and he was an expert welder. <laughs> That's what we needed. That was important. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Now we've got a lot of fond memories of working with you, Lloyd. Yeah, I've got a lot of fond memories working here too. I really, really enjoy it. Uh, uh, I, uh, I'm lucky to get a job like that after Harvester shut down, you know, because a lot of the people that I knew didn't get jobs like that. And some of them wound up uh, as a maintenance man in an apartment complex or something like that, you know. And uh, so I really lucked into it. And I, I give. Uh, Gerald Eckert to credit for that too because he uh, he's the one that, that got me the first job and uh, because I had experience with my own diesel equipment your dad then hired me back the second time I came back to to uh, work on the, you're getting diesel trucks in and uh, he, he, that's the reason he hired me back he asked me if I had diesel equipment diesel experience and I said mm -hmm. yeah I do have diesel experience so that's that got me back I think that was about 95 when we started buying the diesel trucks, maybe 94. Somewhere along there, yeah, it was in the mid-90s. Uh, yeah, because, uh, yeah, that's about right. Mm -hmm. So, uh, but they were also new. We didn't have a whole lot of trouble with them. <laughs> they were good trucks. They were. Oh, yeah, we hired one guy one time. Remember, I had to, uh, to uh, check out some of the drivers, you know, give them, Drivers test and hired you guys hired one one guy one time to to drive that truck over at LAP and I was I was telling him about the truck and all so on I said it's got uh, let's see what did I call it uh, it's got one of those uh, man manpower steering kits on it oh yeah. <laughs> yeah. Armstrong <laughs> power steering Armstrong power steering that was it yeah got one of the Armstrong power steerings on it. Mm -hmm. and, uh, he got in and started driving. He said, I thought you said it had power steering. And I said, I said it had Armstrong power steering. It takes a strong arm turn away. wheel. <laughs> he didn't like that too good. But you got things rolling pretty smooth now, I guess. You got a lot of new equipment and good people. Oh, we've been really blessed here the yeah. last few years. But I, I, I still look back and, and think about the, the formative years when you were here and Gerald was here. and. We just had a really good foundation for building upon and some really good people to do that and that's what made all of this possible. Well, I guess so. I appreciate, appreciate you saying that. But, uh, but I think we all learn together. You know, we all work together and, and learn together. Uh, something else I was thinking about. Uh, when you hit 75 years old, so you don't, you don't always remember everything you want to remember. <laughs> Well, that may be helpful in some cases. Oh, yeah, I was, I was thinking about uh, Daryl, Daryl Hoover. You know, it was uh, the parts business was getting bigger, and it, so was the car business. And you had one driver that was very dependable. You had good drivers. You had several good drivers. Ben was a good driver, and Daryl. And you asked me one time which one I thought would make a good dispatcher. 
And the first thing that came to mind real quick was Daryl, because he, Daryl is a smart man. And uh, so he was dependable. I could call him uh, no matter when you needed a driver, I could call Daryl. And he had that other business going. He'd come over and, and drive for us anytime you needed, you know. So I, I, I mentioned Daryl, and uh, he worked out really good. He wound up taking the parts business and building it up a whole lot bigger than, than what it was when I was here. Daryl was talking recently about the first week that he worked here part time, and we worked in 51 hours. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's right. <laughs> we did. <laughs> This didn't have room for full time people. <laughs> no. Yeah, that was that was a full time job there, a part time job there, fifty one hours. At least he got to go home at night sometimes, you know. Yeah. <laughs> I, I was remembered too that the day that I was closing up and and uh, locked the door, turned the alarm on and then the phone rang. And I I was I couldn't uh, couldn't not answer the phone. So I went and answered the phone, and the alarm went off. <laughs> and while you were right. on the phone? Yeah, while well, I was on the phone. <laughs> and uh, so I got off the phone and, and uh, had to call the alarm company and <laughs> get the alarm shut off. One thing's loud. <laughs> oh, boy. Yeah. Well, Lloyd, we sure have enjoyed you coming by here today, and you too, Mary, and just reliving some of the old times. Well, I really, I really am glad to do it because I think about you guys a lot, you know. We, uh, so we uh, we better get on on down the road. Maybe. All right. Well, Mary, it was great to see you again. Thanks so much for stopping by. Lloyd, look forward to visiting with you the next time. Okay. You're a good man. Well, I don't know about that. And we love you too, Lloyd. <laughs> love you guys too. I'll walk out with you. Okay. Hmm, that's weird. Don sitting in his office, not on the computer. What was he doing? What was he reading? Safe driving techniques. Hmm, let's just open this up here. Ah, oh, busted. <laughs>